In this lesson, we will examine how to avoid some of the common mistakes that students often make when they begin tackling data sufficiency questions. The first tip is examine each statement independently. In other words, do not carry information from one statement to the other statement. I'll use the following example to show what can happen when we carry information from one statement to the other statement. In this question, we want to find Quan's age. So first we examine statement one, which tells us that Quan is two years older than Olympia. So we think to ourselves, this information is not sufficient. For the statement to be sufficient, we would need to know Olympia's age. Now on to statement two. Hey, this statement tells me Olympia's age. That's exactly the information I needed. So statement two must be sufficient, which means the answer is B. Now, of course, this answer is incorrect. What happened here? Well, we used information from statement one to help us determine whether statement two is sufficient. We can't do that. We must determine whether each statement alone is sufficient. So how can we avoid making this mistake? Well, as you are examining a statement, say statement one, cover statement two with your finger so that it does not play a role in determining whether or not statement one is sufficient. Similarly, when you are examining statement two, cover statement one. When we do this, we can see that statement two alone is not sufficient. Okay, that's the first tip. The next tip is do not overcalculate. Here's an example of this. In this question, we are asked to determine whether or not x equals 6. Statement 1 tells us that x is less than 10. Does this statement provide sufficient information to answer the target question? No, x could equal 6 or it could equal a different number. So statement 1 is not sufficient. Now on to statement 2. Does this statement provide enough information to answer the target question? Well, here's the mistake that some students make. They take the equation and proceed to solve it. Doing this wastes valuable time since it is not necessary to solve this equation for x. Your only task when tackling data sufficiency questions is to determine whether or not a statement provides enough information to answer the target question. In other words, if we know that 4.25x minus 11.75 equals 13.75, does this provide us with enough information to determine whether or not x equals 6? The answer is yes. This does give us enough information because we could solve the equation for x, in which case we could determine whether or not x equals 6. Of course, we're not going to solve for x because we are not required to do so, and because doing so would waste valuable time. So statement 2 is sufficient, which means the correct answer here is B. The last tip in this lesson is, do not confuse the answer to the sufficiency question with the answer to the target question. Here's what I mean. In this question, we must determine whether or not x equals 6. Statement 1 tells us that 2x equals 100. Does this statement provide sufficient information to answer the target question? The answer to this sufficiency question is yes. There is sufficient information to answer the target question because we could solve the equation for x, in which case we could determine whether or not x is equal to 6. So statement 1 is sufficient. Now here's the mistake that some students make. They look at statement 1 and see that x must equal 50. Now the target question asks, does x equal 6? So the answer to the target question is no, x does not equal 6. At this point, some students will take the answer of no and apply it to the sufficiency question, which asks, does this statement provide sufficient information to answer the target question? If they conclude that no, the statement does not provide sufficient information, then they will erroneously conclude that statement 1 is not sufficient. So, when tackling data sufficiency questions, remember that your goal is to determine whether each statement is sufficient to answer the target question. Do not confuse the answer to the sufficiency question with the answer to the target question. Now let's finish this question. First, as we have seen, statement 1 is sufficient. Statement 2 is also sufficient, which means the correct answer here is D.
So to summarize, you can avoid common errors if you examine each statement independently, do not overcalculate, and do not confuse the answer to the sufficiency question with the answer to the target question.